I just heard. Like, go ahead. No more. Good afternoon. This is the December 20th meeting of the Police Station Building Committee, and we do have a couple of members calling in remotely, so we are going to do a roll call, and I will start with that. So we have Alex Martinez. Present. Kristen Loss. Present. Keith Baldinger. Present. Myself, I am here. Donna O'Connor. Here. Joe Morrow. Present. John Ambra. Here. Chief Anderson, are you with us? Yes, present and remote. Mo DePaulo. Mo, are you with us yet? Okay, just shout out when you get here, if you're watching. Neil Joyce. I am here. Brian DePasquale. Present. Matt Salad. Present. Okay, we do have a quorum and this meeting is called to order. First on the agenda, we have the minutes from November 18th, 2021. Any questions or comments? Make a motion we accept the minutes. Second. Second. We have a motion and a, and a second to accept the minutes from November 18th, 2021. Uh, when I call your name, please vote. Kristen Loss. Yes. Keith Baldinger. Yes. Myself, aye. Donna O'Connor. Yes. Aye. Joe Morrow. John Ambra. Aye. Chief Anderson. Aye. Mo, are you with us yet? No. Okay, so we'll record that as 7 to 0 for the minutes. Next, we have series of bills to pay. We have Fontaine Brothers Allied Testing Laboratories. Uh, Fontaine Brothers, $806,879. Allied Testing, $2,750. Construction, construction Monitoring Services for a total of $31,048.63. Selco, $16,050.22 and Tecton Architects, 53853 for a grand total of $910,580.85. Any questions, comments on those bills? There being none, do we have a motion? Will we approve? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the bills previously listed for a total of $910,580.85. Kristen? Yes. Keith? Yes. Myself? Yes. Donna? Yes. Yes. Joe? John? Yes. Chief? Yes. Okay, and that'll be recorded seven to nothing. Thank you. Item four, we hear reports. Um, first, the owner's project manager, Neil Joyce. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, um, yeah. My comments will be brief today. I apologize. I uh, left the budget printout on my printer this afternoon when I left. So I will send out that out to the committee and make it available um, by the end of the day tomorrow. I'll send it through uh, Kristen and Alex. Um, in terms of progress in the field, uh, they had a very, very productive month, whether it was cooperative. Um, Operations focused basically on structural steel and masonry work largely. And then in addition to that, they've got some utility work um, done with the primary installation out to the pole. And uh, generally speaking, um, a very, very good month progress-wise. I'm sure Matt and uh, Ryan will speak more to that afterwards. Uh, we prepared the change order, change order procedure, which we'll talk about under separate minutes. So I'll defer comments on that. Until yes, we will. Okay. Thank Very you. Very good. Thank you. Any questions for Neil? Thank you, Neil. Would you say that the weather has put us ahead of schedule, or? Oh, I would say it's helped us maintain schedule. Okay. All right. Good. But I would say we're still pretty much in the same spot we were at this time last month when good. we last met. Let's hope it keeps cooperating. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let the Minutes show that Justine Snyder has joined us. Hi, Justine. Hello. Okay. Um, next up, thanks, thanks, Neil. You're next good. up, we have report from the architect, Matt Salad. Good afternoon, Matt. Excuse good me. Good afternoon. Oh, Donna. Sorry, um, I, I wasn't keeping track of which group. Is this? Are we? Can we talk about this? The with change Neil? orders. Yeah. That'll be a separate agenda. Separate. Okay. All right. Sorry. That's oh. okay. Um, so I have a few items I, I just want to cover. Um, one uh, update on construction. Um, we have a, we have another uh, drone flyover uh, video to share as well. Um, 
Uh, quick update on where we stand at the moment on the second exit drive in the ball fields out of the police parking lot. Um, quick update on the Sacred Acre plantings that we had discussed at the last meeting, um, as well as an update to the locker and restroom revisions um, that have been um, mentioned throughout the month in your in your committee updates as well. Let's touch on that. So. Uh, just a few photos um, from the ground level before we go up into the sky. Um, this is on the front entrance. Um, last month when we were looking at this, it was no more than um, the prep for the building pad and the foundations. And now you can see that um, pretty much most of the major structural steel for the two-story portion of the building um, is up. Uh, the pieces that are, that are missing, um, for the most part, are... Uh, really just your light gauge trusses and things like that that are going to be going on for the roof structure. But this is a majority of the structural steel components for the two-story portion of the building. Uh, this is just a view from the where the main desk is going to be located. So this is just the front of dispatch, um, and it's looking towards um, the training room and the back stair that will be out there. Um, and then this is looking away from the existing police station and dispatch towards the back. And, and this is basically where the communications equipment room is going to be. You can see the large volume of, of uh, conduit penetrations that are going to be coming up through the slab for a lot of the electrical and data that are going to be going in and out of that space. It's, it's quite substantial. Um, this is the front corner of the building. This is sort of where that sunken <laughs> plaza is, is, is essentially going to be. You can see looking left to right as the foundation wall sort of steps down to that, to that two-foot depression where the plaza is going to be located. Um, and then this is taking a step further back, um, looking at the area where the training room is going to be uh, on the lower level. Off to the right is where the cells and sally port are. So those two large openings in the steel with rebar sticking up, that's the, um, those are the lintels um, for the overhead garage doors that are going to be there. And that, that rebar that's sticking up above the steel there, that's, that's to uh, carry the uh, masonry that will be getting installed on top of that beam. Uh, and this is just a more straight on shot of that of that area. Um, this is the male cell block. Um, so in those in those depressions are, are essentially where the cell block is. And then the, the corresponding um, block walls will be built up on those haunches uh, in between them. You can see where the plumbing is coming up for some of the, the toilets that will be included in the in the cells themselves. Um, and then the door opening to the right. Um, which will lead into the prisoner processing area. Uh, this is a shot from the corridor. So right now we're looking sort of right at the, right at the middle of the building um, between fitness to the left and evidence in, in the detention area to the right, and then looking down the corridor um, to what will eventually be an exterior door. And you can see a, a large window that will be in the corridor sort of looking into the fitness area off to the left. <clears throat> um, this is looking towards that same area, but from, from the sally port. So this is, again, looking in the sally port out the overhead doors and towards the back of the fitness area. So that's where that scaffolding and staging is. They were, they were in the middle of constructing that exterior wall at the time. Um, this is the garages. Just like the sally port, we have a large beam lintel that goes over all those overhead doors that are they're going to be framed out um, with masonry structured above that. So. Um, once that steel was set in place, the mason can come back in and finish a lot of that up, which I believe most of it is complete now. Uh, and then the, the flyover. Um, so again, this is over the second story portion right now. So this is the uh, administrative portion of the building. Um, Detectives Bureau off to the back here. And then, and then this is the single story piece here with the structural steel was going up just over the past couple of days. You can see the site contractor processing that large pile of dirt that's out in the back corner there that's being processed for topsoil and for reuse on site uh, in the future. And then coming back, you can sort of see where the scaffolding has been removed from the fitness area here, and that's all, that's all been framed and masonry has been completed there and just waiting for the roof structure to be installed. And metal decking is going on. Um, sounds like we're going to be having um, the elevated slabs poured before the slab on grade. So that metal decking will, will go in. And then early in January, <coughs> if weather cooperates, it should be a relatively simple process to get the slab on deck 
set up and then the roof structure above that to, to go in shortly thereafter. That's it for the construction update. Any questions? I believe to Neil's point, we're, we're right on target with where we want to be for the most part. Everything seems to be moving forward and on track and on schedule. Um, one thing you will notice, I, I noticed it today, uh, last week the, the steel at the top of the cupola was, was on, but there were some clips that were missing, so that did come down in order to get um, repaired to have the, the, the right details installed there. So that's why that steel has come down and it, it will be going right back, it will be going up, back up. I may have missed this, but all the concrete is done and cured. There's no, uh, the foundations, yes. Yeah, yeah so, so the, the perimeter foundations, the slabs have not yet gone in yet. Is the temperatures going to interfere with the curing of that at all, or do you, are they going to plan for that with fans? And so, yeah, so we have um, in, in the contract, we have cold weather procedures for how they deal with setting concrete during temperatures that are below a certain um, certain temperature. So. They can't put it down on any frozen earth or anything like that. So if it is frozen, they have to heat it up or, or remove that, that frosted or frozen earth and, and replace it with uh, crushed gravel uh, and then put concrete over it. And that temperature has to be maintained over the concrete um, per our specifications. And so it, it'll, I believe you guys are tenting for, for the installation? Yeah, we're going to use a similar procedure um, from what was uh, done at the Beale School. We're kind of hitting the same schedule for slabs uh, as that one. So. I won't take over uh, Matt's architect's update at this time, but I can mention something in my update for that. Definitely. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, ball fields and second egress drive. So just wanted to give everybody an update. This is still an ongoing conversation. Um, last we spoke, we had talked about um, the, the different options for arranging the drive, either, either coming in straight and then and then coming up to, to the current intersection or really keeping it as far to the north as we can to preserve as much field um, space as, as possible. Uh, this was reviewed with the Parks and Cemeteries Commission and there just wasn't enough on the, the initial plan where we showed the two soccer fields side to side and the, the overlapping softball field programmatically just didn't work for them so we weren't going to continue with that. Um, so we were putting together some options for just two soccer fields, the drive, and then possibly some, some parking um, on site. So I'm just sort of showing a block to indicate that, that we're exploring that option. Um, one thing to note that's, that's really important for this is we're trying to minimize our um, stormwater impact. That's why at the last time we had presented this, we had talked about doing um, the, the turf pave or something like that so that we weren't putting uh, impervious surface down and contributing to um, stormwater issues. We didn't want to have to increase the capacity of that or, or turn this into a larger infrastructure project. So um, th this is where we are right now. It's sort of on, on hold uh, until we can review a little bit further some of the impacts on site. So the topping off ceremony on January 5th, we will be meeting um, over at the ball fields to review the existing site conditions and, and be talking through some of the finer details of this so that at the next committee meeting or shortly thereafter, we'll have a more definitive um, update for this as well as uh, some more information. I'm probably asking you obvious question, but uh, where, where are the parking lots situated in relation to the emergency exit? The, the, the proposed one? Right. This one? Uh, this is just, um, I, I should clarify, this is just diagrammatically just to show that the, this is something we're exploring, but it hasn't been worked out. So, so it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, it would be, we haven't talked about the finer details of whether or not it's part of or, or exclusive of the emergency drive, but I believe on earlier conversations we had, the tendency was to lean towards separating out the emergency exit drive from anything that would require parking or public driving. So right now I'm showing it sort of, spurring spurring off and becoming sort of a one-way in, in and out here and not being part of of the exit drive so they wouldn't have to cross over that exit drive or anything so that someone coming out of that exit would know that they're isolated correct yeah i think I we, we even we even talked about at one point and in, in, if if i was to zoom in you could see it talking um doing a uh, a wood guardrail or something like that to right. to further isolate that drive from the. I, I just didn't know what the parking lot how that fit in <coughs> with the with the fence for example sure i didn't want people crossing over yes yeah absolutely 
Um, and because the seasons have changed, I did want to bring back a couple of images we presented a few months ago. Um, so uh, in early October, we had shown a couple of images just of, of the tree line, the existing tree line at the edge of the ball fields, just to show the density in the view shed um, to what is going to become the fence line um, for the police parking lot. And there were some questions whether that should be chain link as it's currently designed or if that should be the decorative fence because you can see through there. And so I did, I did run over and take some images of, of it today now that the leaves have fallen. Um, and I will say that there is some, some visibility through the trees to the, to the site. Um, it was, it was actually hard for me to discern, though, the chain link fence that is there for the construction fence around the perimeter. So um, I, I would recommend that anybody that is concerned with this matter go take a look for it for themselves in person because the photos don't do it justice. But you, you can squint and make out where the construction fence is here, and it would be sort of similar to that. But it is, it is a little difficult, more difficult to discern than I thought, would have thought it at the beginning. Um, so I'll sort of leave that anecdotally until a few more people take sure. a peek. I agree. <laughs> I can see. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay. Any other questions or thoughts on? No. Um, Sacred Acre. Um, so last we spoke, we had talked about um, adding the, the line of trees on either side uh, of, of the green here. Um, one, of the, one of the thoughts was alternating two different trees for resiliency and for a little bit of um, variation. Um, and the other is to have them be a little bit more seasonal with the, some that would flower in, in the springtime and, and the like. So um, the plan hasn't changed, but we did bring a couple of species um, for consideration, and these would be sort of alternating one after the other. Um, so the first one we're proposing is an eastern redbud that you can see on the left, sort of pink flowering in the springtime. Um, there was a, we had, we had proposed a few options. One that we wanted to, one, one thing that we wanted to stay with is sort of more vertical trees, so columnar trees. Columnar tree, yeah. <laughs> was the term, ones that wouldn't sprawl out, but would sort of grow up and then, and then canopy over. Um, and so the other option, uh, or, or the, the alternating tree, um, which contrasts the red bud nicely, is this white fringe tree. Um, so a little bit of variation in color in spring and a little depth with, with these two options. Um, so just so everyone gets a sense of sort of the cost of, of what this is, because it was in the original contract, but it's being carried as an alternate by the landscaper. I don't believe we have that number. No, available we yet, yet no. but we can put that together just so you, just so everybody is aware aware of what the change is. Matt, any idea how how tall those get? Um, I can get that information. They're not they're not ma massive trees. It's okay. probably a twenty five foot canopy or something All right. like that. But we can certainly provide that information. Donna, I, I like the trees. I, I'm just trying to visualize, and it's just my vision. Is that a driveway or a walkway to the left of those trees? Um, it looks like the for the red bud, that's a walking path. Right. And the fringe tree, it looks like a driveway. Okay, so my only question, if they plow that, are those trees fragile where they could get damaged or are they okay for being right there? Um, I, can, I can ask our, our landscape architect to, to advise on the resiliency from beautiful. plowing and salts and things like that. beautiful. That would be my only question. Sure. Yeah, we can get that information to you. Um, so if there's no objections to sort of this direction, we'll, we'll put all that together. And for the next committee, we'll have all of that information and we'll have a full package um, for approval. Uh, and then one last item, just uh, the locker and restroom um, update. So there was one more revision that we did make. Um, based on conversations over the past month since we last spoke, and, and, I, and I, we did provide some narratives to that um, in your committee updates. Um, so it was noted um, a few weeks ago that with the changes to the gender neutral lockers on the second floor, that we had removed all independent bathrooms, bathrooms independent of locker rooms themselves on the second floor. And, and the chief had brought up a number of operational concerns um, 
with how this gets used and if it was if it was something where this was staff only on the second floor all the time I, I think it it made sense in the direction we had taken by changing these to locker rooms but that's not necessarily the case there's the public that that comes up for various things with administration there there might be some um detainees that are being uh, interrogated in, in the interview rooms or, or some other folks that may be incriminating themselves in, in, in various other departments and outside agencies that would be up here conducting mutual responses uh, and, and activities um, for various police uh, operations. So um, it, was, it, it, it was a little inappropriate uh, for all of the restroom facilities on the second floor to become locker rooms and not just bathrooms because of the different types of use groups that would be up there and using it. So um, it, it seemed like, it, based on the conversations we've had over the past month, that it would be that it'd be reasonable um, accommodations to use the gender neutral locker room on, on the ground floor for, for the entire department. And sort of as a, as a trade off, what we had done is um, provided future plumbing provisions so that in the future, 5, 10, 15 years down the road, if the, demo, the demographic population of the department or the need changes, that it would be less of, a, less of an issue to then convert these bathrooms into gender neutral locker rooms at another time. So showers and the shower plumbing and waste lines and things like that are, are sort of being roughed in and then capped and terminated so that you wouldn't have to go and tear half the building apart to put a shower in down the road and, and make those accommodations. That makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. Um, that's all I have. Very good. Any other questions, comments? Chief, anything? No, I'm good. Okay. All right. Very good. And next, we're, we'll hear from the construction manager. Ryan, you're up. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, briefly, to start a procurement update, I do not have any. LORs to uh, Neil and CMS yet for execution. I have five of them that I'm waiting for the uh, final I's to get dotted and T's to get crossed. So I hope to have those wrapped up by the end of the week, just with the gender neutral bathroom revisions and some other moving parts, um, trying to get everything squared away so that we have everything right. Um, so I hope to have some more uh, letters of recommendation before the holidays. Um, on site, obviously, you can see steels going up, uh, as was shown in the video. Uh, this morning, we took the last delivery of steel. So that is the remainder of the steel for all of the um, CMU areas. Uh, they started in the two-story area right now that is fully erected. They're detailing all of that steel, putting decking down, shear studs, making sure all their connections are bolted up and torque controlled. Um, so the, we expect all of the steel to be erected and the big crane to be gone by, uh, by the end of the week. And it'll just be falling back to detailing the rest of the building. Um, and we hope to have the second story uh, reviewed by our third party inspector, uh, allied testing to make sure it's safe to access and have the MEP trades get on to the second story next week and start laying out their penetrations um, in preparation for slab on deck placement. Um, so we've kind of seen a uh, change, or we're going to be seeing a change in the groups of uh, subcontractors that are on site uh, in November and through December. We've had a big push from our uh, Mason and uh, now the structural steel erector. Once our structural steel is complete and as the CMU structure is winding down, we'll see a shift more towards our uh, MEPs and soon enough our drywall subcontractor. Um, we've been hitting all of our dates with steel erections, so we expect that to be completed on time. And we are, uh, uh, the, all the roof trusses for the two-story area are in fabrication. So uh, that's all moving ahead nicely. Hopefully we have a mild winter and uh, the money that we funded uh, through the project for winter conditions and temporary heating and everything can be used sparingly. So everything's uh, going pretty well right now and uh, hopefully we have a mild winter. Oh, thanks, Ryan. Any questions or comments? No? Very good. Thanks. All right. That brings us to item five, review and vote on change order approval process. So I, I guess I will open this one up. Um, last week, I had a phone conversation with Kristen and Keith. 
to talk about the entire process for this because I wanted to get my hands around it a little bit. And um, Keith gave us a lot, of, provided a lot of insight as to how the whole process works. And I, I think to me, or, or what we concluded, what makes sense is that um, we set a cost limit of twenty-five thousand uh, dollars. Anything at or below twenty-five thousand dollars, Kristen, it would all be vetted, of course, by by Neil, brought to Kristen Keith and myself. We would review it, ask any questions that we might have, but um, it would make sense to have that give give that power to approve just to keep the process going and not having to bring everything back to the full committee. That seems to be standard practice with other building projects and that seems to be around the amount that um, makes sense. I've talked to some selectmen that have worked on other projects in other towns and that seems to be right around the number that they use also. Um, now that does not mean that everything under $25,000 will just be approved by us if we feel that there's something that needs to go to the full committee we would certainly bring it to you to the full committee for a discussion and a vote um, Keith you had given some examples of what that might be yes I mean I mean there could there could be items um, that are wants not necessarily needs so those would we would certainly want to vet those out through the committee um, and then if items that may use owners contingency or um, CM contingency, we might want to discuss those depending on what the value is. Um, you know, so we could come to you with a $2,000 change order and say, hey, do we really want to do this kind of thing? So just to kind of, it, 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 it's, I think that's, again, there's a lot of things that they need to keep the construction process moving forward. So it doesn't, we don't lose schedule, but there's also items that might, we might come across that, we may look at and say, well, wait a second, do we really need this? We should discuss this with, and it could be based on landscaping or um, furnishings in the building or uh, mill work or something like that, right. just, just to make a change. And then just for full transparency, at the subsequent meeting to any change orders that might occur, they, those will all be reviewed for the entire committee so that we can talk about those. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so anybody have any questions or concerns with that process? Mm -hmm. Everybody comfortable with that number? Yeah. Okay, very good. Do we have to do any motion to that, or are we just? Well, I think I think we do need to vote on the change order approval process. So, if there are, there are no further discussions, I, I, it, Mo, did Mo ever check in? Yes, he's on. I'm here, Pat. Oh, do you have any questions on that? Um, no, I'm good. Okay. How about you, Chief? No, it sounds good to me. Okay. So, yeah, I guess at, at this point we would need a motion to um, approve this change order approval process. Pat, can I just suggest? Oh, sure, Neil. Um, on the second bullet item that yep. was included in your packet, I assume this yes. went to the committee. Um, the second bullet I've amended to, to read, review and approve forward price cost proposals and authorize work to proceed up to a value of $25,000. Okay. Is that, I think that's what I heard. I yes. I want to make sure that that's the case. Yes. Okay. With, you know, again, with discretion, if we yes, feel that we certainly. need to bring it to the full yep. committee. Yep. Do we do we have a motion out there? I make a motion that we accept the uh, approval. The change order approval process. Change order approval, as, as uh, Neil has indicated. Very good. We have a motion. Do we have a second. second? Second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve the change order approval process as discussed in the last five or ten minutes or so. Um, all those in favor? Kristen? Yes. Yes. Keith? Justine? Yes. Myself? Yes. Donna? Aye. Joe? Yes. John? Yes. Mo? Yes. Chief? Yes. Thank you, everybody. So that is done um, unanimously, nine to zero, which brings us to item number six. Since we did not have this approval in place prior to just now, uh, we do have several change orders uh, that we have to review and act upon. So I guess, Neil, you have the- Sure, I'll, I'll just um, walk through the memo that we prepared. Um, the first two items I think are pretty straightforward. Um, P 
TCO2 was generated and represents the change in uh, scope between the documents that were priced for the site work package, um, which were, I believe, 60% documents. And then after final approval, uh, there was a, a group of activity or a group of scope that was um, added as the, as the final drawings were uh, reconciled and approved at various town boards uh, through the permitting process. So the $26,350 represents the difference between what was priced under the original agreement and what was finally permitted for construction by the town. Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, a, a group of site-related work. PCO number four was um, similar. Similarly, the steel work was bid on 60% documents, and while the final uh, construction documents were being prepared, one single beam was added over an opening um, in the CMU, the structural CMU walls. So the, the additional cost of that beam was $1,039. Um, both of those change orders, PCO2 and PCO4, were funded uh, or are proposed to be funded through scope holds, which was um, money that was set aside when we bid the original project, understanding that there would be these types of uh, scope changes as we move through to uh, the permanent construction documents. Um, both the site work and the structural steel scope holds were of uh, higher value than these change orders, so they were appropriately priced and identified at the early stage. Um, so there, will, there would be no change to the GMP, and any funds remaining in those scope holds would be returned to the CM contingency after this change order is voted through. Uh, PCO 9 was a change to a circuit breaker that was located on the main distribution panel um, coming into the building. I will profess that I am not an electrical engineer, so that's about the limit of the, of the technical expertise I can provide. Um, it was a breaker that was caught by the electrician as a requirement to meet um, the National Electric Code. Um, the price of the breaker was uh, $2,992, and there was no labor associated with it. It was strictly for a material increase. So that was found to be acceptable, and um, the, this funding would come through the CM contingency uh, for the project, would not affect the GMP. So, so far, there's been no, uh, no effect to the overall price of the contract. Uh, PCO 19, <coughs> was a change. The asphalt shingle that was specified for the roof is currently not being produced. So we had a supply chain issue. We went to an alternative product with an equivalent warranty. Um, the actual cost was a savings to the project of almost $843. Um, so that also would be uh, redirected to the uh, CM contingency within the GMP and not affect the bottom line. The last item is uh, PCO 17, which was um, when we coordinated the work of bringing the primary electrical service into the site, Selco had made a, re a recommendation and a request that we move the um, service pole that was to receive the primary service from the opposite side of Maple Avenue about 75 or 100 feet further down Maple Ave to the west. Um, and that would allow the electrical service to basically come overhead at a 90 degree angle to the existing pole. And it would be easier for them to support the infrastructure that exists on Maple Ave. So that, that change, um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, it required an extension of the existing primary electrical and uh, some additional clearing, and uh, also associated with that was a change from a above ground transformer uh, pad to an underground transformer vault. All of this was done at the request of Selco at a cost of $17,311.
Um, we are recommending that this change, because it came through a third party and could not have been reasonably anticipated by the CM, would be funded th through the owner's contingency on the project. And change order one was prepared with the resultant increase um, to the GMP. Be happy to take any questions. Donna. Um, on this PCO 17. Yes. Uh, is that something, I mean, it's good that they picked up on it, but is that something that should have been picked up on sooner during the review process? I, I, I don't know that I'm prepared to answer that because I can't, um, I don't know when, when Selco could have made that request or made that observation or made that um, request to the project. Do you know, Kristen? I don't have that knowledge, no. Mm, no. No? Just wondered if it was an oversight. I mean, it's a good pickup. You can look at it both ways, right. oversight or a good pickup. Which was it? I would say let's go with a good pickup. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a good question. Um, you know, I think these are actually good examples of the types of change orders we will be seeing coming down the road. So it, the timing on all this is pretty good. They're not significant changes. Unfortunately, a lot of them are not going to change the GMP price. Um, we are going to have to add on the 17000 but I don't think that's, a, that's an unreasonable number at this point. Um, just, Neil, just for... In, in your experience, as, as, the project, as projects like this go forward, do you tend to run into fewer? Do you get a lot of the change orders at, at about this point in the process? or We find that they're about half and half. Once, most of the unforeseen and third-party requests come as you're bringing the building out of the ground. Okay. And then after the building is out of the ground and the services are installed into the building, you, you, you run into a handful of coordination issues. Mm -hmm. um, that is pretty normal and pretty typical for a project of this size. And then you'll see some finish issues um, as you come up and the work progresses. It's, it's, it's normal. Um, certainly, I think we're well ahead of the curve on this job. This is really the only thing we've seen so far coming out of the ground. So I think we've done very well. Okay, Donna. I don't Thank you. know. Speak, I'm just thinking of change orders and that going forward. <coughs> the... Um, family room, as we're calling it, I guess. Yes. That it's being converted to a family room. Yes. And it was a closet before or an office? Closet. I think it I was thought. the supply closet on the on the second yeah. floor. Um, it's on the first. The one, yeah, the the first floor, the the health room. Yes. Yeah, that was a janitor's closet originally. Oh, I I was just wondering if. There should be electrical in there for other purposes, unforeseen purposes, that converts it to something else in the future, if it's not used as a... There will be power in the room. Okay. So someone could set up a computer and a desk in there if they wanted to? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, 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 the intent is whenever we do like a mother's room type, type situation like that is, a health room, that we want to make sure that there's a there's the ability for somebody to bring their laptop in, set up, and and work from there. Okay, thanks, Keith. I, I think another thing too that's important about talking when we talk about change orders is that the the not adjusting the GMP is is kind of a key thing, and hopefully, you know, I think this is probably a good example of they caught six out of seven. You know, they kind of knew they, they kind of knew that 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 there might have been changes there, and like I said, the the Selco thing is somewhat odd, but I also will say if we were National Grid, that we would probably be three times that, right? <laughs> right. right. And we'd still be waiting. Better to catch it now. Yeah. Then. So I think they would never have told us. No, <laughs> yeah. absolutely not. Right. Better now than four months from now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, that, that was a it was a good exercise. So now we have to. Um, can we, can we um, vote to approve these all as one package, or do we have to go through them individually? I would recommend a whole uh, package. Okay, so, we could so this will be just titled change order number one, then, I would assume. Yes. 
for a motion. I move we approve change order number one. There you go. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve mm -hmm. change order number one. All those in favor? Kristen. Aye. Keith. Aye. Justine. Aye. Myself. Aye. Donna. Aye. Joe. Aye. John. Aye. Mo. Aye. Chief. Aye. Aye. Very good. Thank you, everybody. And hopefully, change orders will be at a minimum going forward. <laughs> Thanks. So. All right. That brings us to other business. Anybody have anything? No. Pat. Yes, Mo. Could I, I just? I'm going back to the changes in the um, in the restrooms. Um, does does what we're going to do now up on the second floor affect um, the estimate that that we had for doing all of that work? Matt or Ryan? It will decrease the MEP impact on the estimate of the work. What it what it was what the value was to what it'll be now, I have not looked into the revised plans with the future use plumbing yet, so I can't tell you what the exact value is. I have all of those plans out to the subcontractors at this point, and I'm hoping to get those PCOs in front of uh, Tecton and uh, CMS here in the next week or so. Um, hopefully the last subcontractors can get me their information so we can uh, have a hard number um, to look at and hopefully have something together for the uh, January building committee meeting. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay. Well, that brings us to our meeting schedule. And we have January 5th, we have the topping off ceremony. That's at 830, Kristen? Yes. 830. Okay. Hope everybody can make that. Should hey, be that's a.m. <laughs> yes, yes, we, we assume that. Um, then, then we have our regular meetings January 10, February 14, March 21 of 2022, which mm. gets us back to the spring. Which mm -hmm. Already? It's not far away. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, anybody have anything else? No? Do we want to hang around? Do we want to adjourn? <laughs> Move we adjourn. All right. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Kristen? Aye. Keith? Aye. Justine? Aye. Myself? Aye. Donna? Aye. Joe? Aye. John? Aye. Mo? Aye. Chief? Aye. And we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Merry Christmas. Good night. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you.